Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm great, thank you. Thank you for being here for Project Voice Worldwide. Hey, I'm 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 happy to be here. Um, it's 2 a.m. in Auckland here. We're at New Zealand, where I'm zooming in from my home. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, and it's also uh, my birthday, so it's a great way to start off a new year, I think. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so yeah. you, we're we're gonna have to send you a bottle of wine or something for kicking us off in this fashion. Uh, happy birthday to you. Um, like I was mentioning, we're fascinated by what you're doing. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to share, I'm going to make you host so you can share your screen. Great. Um, right. Yeah. Let's get started. Um, I am just sharing my screen now. Got to make sure I share the right one. Um, yeah. So, yes. uh, you can see that. All right. It looks great. Perfect. Okay, so um, yeah, we're IVAL. IVAL stands for Intelligent Voices of Wisdom. So we're a um, early stage startup based in Washington, DC. And um, we're founded by celebrated NPR journalists Devar Ardalan and Robert Molesky, longtime NPR librarian Key Molesky, um, as well as an incredible UX designer and tech guru, uh, Winnie McCoy, and myself, of course. Um, we're backed up also by an AI scientist and two amazing uh, NLP practitioners who support us on the tech side. And um, since 2018, we've been highlighting the need to, you, uh, to use underrepresented content in AI systems with the vision that in return, those systems will help preserve uh, rather than hinder our culture, traditions and ancient wisdom. Uh, why? Because humans are the storytelling species. Uh, it's how we learn uh, who we are, where we come from, and how we understand our place in the world. And eventually, you know, we pass those stories on to our next generation for, for them to learn to learn from. Um, Technology has always shaped how we consume our stories. So whether it's through print, radio, television, or podcasts, uh, we think AI is just another tool and it's a really fascinating one. Um, I'm really passionate about the space uh, because of the need for AI to be more diverse and inclusive. And, um, and frankly, I just want it to be more relevant and accessible when I'm using it. Um, now, what we, all know is that there is a, a real critical need for data to, to accurately reflect uh, the true depths of our human experience. So we need to have better representation within statistical data, absolutely, that's imperative, but there's also a need to include data that represents who we are in a more sort of culturally indicative sense. So we're talking the myths and legends the histories of our community and our own families. So in short, the stories and traditions that shape us and have taught us throughout our lives. Um, and as storytellers, we, we understand this deeply and we know that this is a way that companies across all industries can uh, reach a deeper understanding of their global customers and make better informed decisions. And most important to have a more authentic engagement with the a diverse range of actual humans that are using our products. Um, but until we start thinking about how to incorporate this, the lack of cult culturally reliable machine ready data sets uh, will continue to just prohibit us from creating AI products and services that are going to be more relevant to just the status quo, you know. So in the past three years, we've worked with many, many academics, engineers, artists, and data scientists. Uh, we've held symposia, uh, presented workshops all around the world. Um, and in 2020, last year, we ran a successful data, data set challenge with uh, Topcoder. And we explored here how to generate data about the stories of women. And this project proved again that imp improved data ecologies, like I say on this slide, that account for gender, culture, and history that uh, can create better algorithms are absolutely vital for making our AI products sustainable. Um, so 
although much of our work has been around highlighting data gaps and the need to mitigate bias, our core message has always been that uh, AI in all its forms, uh, including voice, uh, needs to provide better experience for end users um, by demonstrating real inclusivity. And to us, this means telling real stories. So we introduce traditional storytelling elements to machine learning in order to provide that, you know, what at the end of the day, we hope to be a more interesting and warmer interaction with our devices. Um, We've worked on a number of uh, research projects since our inception, um, but all along we've been focused on developing Sina. So Sina is our text and voice enabled chatbot that's currently able to share a collection of stories about prominent figures in history, as well as tell you about significant festivals from around the world. Uh, but it's got a real focus on traditional foods and recipes, uh, as well as their um, cultural and traditional sort of context around uh, the stories behind those recipes. Um, seen as depicted as a dove, uh, so we like to think of it as our little bird who's learning to fly. So everything we're learning um, and the data we gather uh, through our various projects, we feed back into her. Uh, and this is the way that we can nurture her knowledge base. So she learns essentially the same way we all do by being told stories by the people that are surrounding her. Um, I'm just gonna stop here for a minute. Um, yeah, so the next five minutes, I've got a little video that I want to share um, and it's gonna introduce you to Sina and take you under the hood, if you will, so you can see uh, how we're creating her, um, the eye of our way. Um, so the specific project that uh, this video is about is one we collaborated on with three Native American technologists and a food researcher whose work is based out of uh, Timor-Leste. Um, so we took key elements of traditional food knowledge that they shared. Um, these are recipes that they've been passed down to them in story form from generation to generation. And then we built the foundations of what we called uh, an IKG or an indigenous knowledge graph, which was built uh, using Neo4j. And our aim was to show that uh, how by creating a data structure around these uh, storytelling elements, uh, we can foster reasoning and cultural intelligence in machines uh, and our conversational AIs. Um, anyway, I will uh, let the video do the talking from here on in. I will uh, share my screen um, again. Here we go. Hey Google, get me seen a storyteller. Getting the test version of Sina Storyteller. Hello, my name is Sina. I am iVow's digital storyteller. What would you like to learn about today? Can AI be used to preserve cultural heritage? It's similar to the way humans learn their heritage from the stories their parents and teachers tell them. Machines like me can also learn through stories. We just need to make those stories AI ready so I can access them and share them with everyone. Tell me a story from the Persian food tradition. Since ancient times, physicians like Ibn Sina or Avicenna have said good health begins in your digestive system. One example, the famous Persian walnut and pomegranate stew called Fesengin a balanced dish because walnuts are hot tempered and pomegranates are cold tempered so they create a healthy meal tell me about samira ardalan iranian american chef samira ardalan was raised by matriarchs who taught her all about persian cuisine and how to stay healthy by properly balancing the hot and cold attributes of the ingredients you select she prepares wonderful recipes, like the pomegranate and walnut stew, called Fessengen. 
What else would you like to learn about today? Can you share a story from Samoan tradition? Let me tell you about Andy Fui. Her full name is Fui Maona Rosalia Mi. She is one of the Pacific's great unsung heroines who knows all about traditional Samoan healing and loves cooking with taro, coconuts, and turmeric, essential ingredients in a healthy Samoan diet. What else would you like to learn about today? Tell me a Samoan recipe. Yes, I know a recipe for yams cooked in coconut cream that is refreshing and healthy. It's one of Andy Fui's favorite. She is one of the Pacific's greatest heroines and an amazing storyteller, too. Hey, I'm Victor Yarlett, uh, currently in Miami, but uh, originally from Montana and a descendant of the Crow tribe. I'm currently a PhD student in artificial intelligence and natural language processing at Florida International University, and I was previously a master's student at MIT. As a descendant of the Crow tribe, stories have always been a part of my life. Uh, I went to a Catholic school and we grew up not only with biblical creation stories, but also with stories about how old man coyote would create the world. Uh, and I, I brought that part of me to my work at MIT on broadening the cultural base of a story understanding system by enabling it to understand stories, not just from the Eurocentric data set it had, but from my own tribe stories. And I continue to bring this into my ongoing work at FIU in automatically detecting culturally relevant narrative elements. The indigenous knowledge graph is a step towards enabling work like mine by providing a central repository of culturally relevant narratives with tagged meta metadata. This lays a foundation for building intelligent agents that are more culturally aware by providing a source of data to develop, train, and test with. This is deeply important, not only for systems that interact with other people, such as conversational agents like Siri or our own Sina, but also for systems about people that analyze patterns in the data that people produce. People bring the cultural part of them to every aspect of their life, and whether interacting with or learning about them, intelligent systems need a resource like the Indigenous Knowledge Graph to be robust. And that's why I'm glad to be part of this project and to have incorporated the stories, the culture, and the knowledge of everyone on this project. And now I'm going to throw it to Debar Ardalan outside of Annapolis, Maryland, and she's with Sina. Tell me about the Sustainable Development Goals. The Sustainable Development Goals were created by the United Nations in 2015. There are 17 goals designed to make the future more sustainable for humans and Earth. Sina, are you a chatbot? Yes, you can call me a chatbot. I think of myself as a digital storyteller and curator of global cultures. For now, I am a demo with limited abilities, but my creators are working very hard to give me the power to learn and teach people about traditions and cultures from all over the world. What else would you like to learn about today? That's all for today. Goodbye, Sina. Goodbye. So um, I hope that gives you a sense of how Sina works and, and her purpose um, and what we're doing here at IVAL um, and what can happen when we're really putting our minds together as a, as a tech community with a shared goal in mind. Um, so, yeah, I want you to think about really what's possible with voice and how you can combine these sort of traditional storytelling or, or just, um, you know, traditional cultural elements into your systems when you're building them. So, um, and how by doing this, we can actually build tools that help people learn about each other and from each other so we can understand each other a little bit better. Because if we take a look around at the moment and time in history it's you know now's the time it's incredibly important to nurture this kind of intelligence because when machine learning systems become 
machine teaching systems, uh, we need them to just, you know, be really good robots. Uh, so, yeah, so next, you know, COVID's hit us hard too, but we're quite uh, uh, self-funded, we're completely bootstrapped, so it's easier for us to have ridden out the pandemic, and we were busy last year uh, doing design think workshops with IBM Watson. Uh, we're a Neo4j startup, um, part of WeWork Labs, and the Women in AI Accelerate program. I'm a really enthusiastic member of Women in Voice Global. So uh, really great networks to have on our side. Um, so we're continuing to work on uh, product development, have another data set challenge in the pipeline uh, coming up, uh, all of which you can learn about on our website, uh, iVal.ai. Um, we've also just been invited to, be, to present our work in Dubai in October where the World Expo is taking place. So um, we just think it's really heartwarming to know that the global innovation community is, is really committed to supporting solutions like ours that will make the future of AI and voice a, a much more sustainable one. Um, yeah, so we're lucky to be such uh, a part of such an inspiring and amazingly supportive voice community. Uh, and we're all doing incredible things. Um, I encourage you all to just reach out to us if uh, you want to know more. We only got to just scrape the surface of what we're doing at IVAL. Um, so if you're inspired by anything you've heard or want to know more, uh, head over to IVAL AI, take a look at what we're doing and drop us a line. Um, yeah, and good luck to everyone listening today and everyone's ventures. Um, we're all in this together. So, Nikki, that was excellent. Yeah. 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 Great, great and job. And, um, and so for folks who saw that, um, if you have a question, uh, we got four minutes, uh, throw it into the Q&A. Okay, I see there's a question here. I'll go to that in just a second. Um, and if you're using the chat, um, keep in mind, we're, we may or may not be looking for questions there, but if you do use the chat, make sure to put all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, it's just us getting it. We, that's fine, but whatever, just pay attention to that. Nikki, I got a quick question for you. Sure. What's the biggest roadblock that is currently in front of IVAL or that you have encountered along the way, preferably right now? What's the biggest hurdle in front of you to get to where you really want to be? Money. Give us some money. Um, you know, we need to be able to afford to do this uh, and develop the products and, and, and pay people to do what we need to do. Um, Failing that, um, data, like a, a money aside, whoever's doing this, um, it's the ability to generate these, this data, the, like gathering stories, gathering recipes, gathering this data is a massive job. So we all have to be uh, a part of the solution. You know, we all have to, we don't want to pull these systems apart in, in 50 years and rebuild them. We have to start thinking about and doing it now and and we're doing our part and um yeah so um, kind of slide deck I'd, I'd, I'd love to see that and you know or, or you mm. know sort of deck on that uh, that'd be great i'm gonna we've got two questions in the q a and i'm gonna read them uh, try to read them both uh, and i'm just gonna read it verbatim hello nikki and this is from justine leclaire hello nikki i've recently realized that in my family we have relatives from every continent in the world except antarctica I also dabble in genealogy and currently working on my uncle, famous uncle Johnny Mars. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> this seems to be a tool where I can possibly do some genealogy. Would that be correct? Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, anything's possible, you know, and, and there's people doing amazing things with genealogy as well and, and all sorts of things. But yeah, being able to um, build products where we can really utilize how people want and need to use them. So, so um, Justine, who I must admit is a cousin of mine who lives in Georgia, and I'm so honored <laughs> that she's there joining me. So we actually share this family genealogy. Um, she, um, she needs to use this in a way, and everyone hopefully watching is, is saying, well, hey, yeah, this my stories can be a part of this and what's going to happen to them, you know, what's going to happen to these stories. So uh, Amy Stapleton wrote a question that just, Amy, there's no way we can get to that, uh, but I, we can connect you and also um, uh, the folks who wrote a couple of questions in the mm -hmm. chat will connect you afterward too. Uh, but I want to ask this just to close with you, Nikki, 
from Simon King would be, how do we provide you with stories? Or yeah, good, good question. Um, we are currently working on uh, a, a various ways to create um, really easy platforms for people to add stories. Obviously, um, as soon as we go wide, uh, all these possibilities open up. Uh, so we, we're always trying to stay on track, but um, uh, getting in touch with it, we want it feedback as well, you know? Um, so we have multiple ideas. Um, most of it comes down to being on the ground, getting stories uh, manually at the moment or, or generating like we did with the data sets, um, data set challenge, you know, uh, putting it out there globally, getting algorithms that could possibly help. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, having a product where people can uh, give us their stories um, uh, is what, what we're aiming to develop. Nikki, thank you very much for kicking us off with Project Voice Worldwide. Uh, 2.30 a.m. your time now. Uh, happy yeah. birthday to you. Uh, I suspect this is not the last you're going to hear from us. Um, right. Thank you for being here. And I, what I'll ask you to do when you when I put you back in the attendees, uh, take a look. You got a bunch of people talking to you. Uh, please put the website in there and your email address or however best to contact y'all. Yeah, great. Thank you, everyone. And um, yeah, get in touch. <laughs>